finally we have another road trip and this time it's not in a Tesla. Oh no, this is the Jaguar I-Pace fully electric SUV. So I'm going to drive it from uh, Salzburg to Busdorf in Germany and then back again. And we're going to do some uh, tests, yeah, lots of tests, some charging tests, high speed runs and all the good stuff. So yes, uh, we have charged the car to 100%. And now we're heading down the, the Swedish coast and um, it's going to be a long drive because uh, it's going to take a long time because most of the trip now we will only rely on 50 kilowatt fast chargers. The, the 150 plus kilowatt uh, fast charger network is not ready yet. We have one 350 kilowatt fast charger in the Röde Crew that we will test tonight. Yeah. So this is finally the first time I'll be able to test IPs on a long trip and i will have more stuff next week also so oh yes i'm looking forward to this oh, i'm going to spend the next 48 hours in the ipace i brought most of my equipment with me also sleeping equipment so i will sleep in the car <laughs> yes okay so you know what um i i'm, I'm not sure how how far we can drive but um i was aiming for falcon by 300 kilometers almost 200 miles from here i'm not sure yet we have to see i might have to stop earlier maybe in gothenburg so um yeah it's still early so let's wait like half an hour before we decide where to stop We are at the Fortum fast charger here in Kungsbacka in Sweden and I was going to charge but we have a problem. So let's see. I plug it in right and then I have the RFID in here. It says checking the card and then oh, I think it means I mean like invalid card or something. I mean what the heck? I've been using it in Sweden before, so why why did it suddenly stop working? Uh, I also tried to use the app, it didn't work, so you see here. Uh, come on, maybe I have to go to another uh, fast charger, but um, well, I have to call the mess, I have to call the support phone here. Shit. All right, great news. I talked to the Fortum uh, support guys and we are charging. Yeah, this is what it looks like. Not how it looks like. Yes, I know the difference. Uh, so, uh, unfortunately, in the Jag, there's no uh, information about how fast we are charging. Let's try to fire up the car. Okay, so I had to call the support people and then they started. They said this one is troublesome, yeah. So uh, I've been using uh, uh, Fortum chargers in Sweden before without any problems. So now we have to go to, uh, well, several places to go, but if you go, what is this dude to get, no, no, huh? What, no, profile, no, no, that's fine, no, no, don't worry about that. Uh, no, 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 let's just go, let's go um, home. There, and then here, and then my EV. And here you can see still charge, but it doesn't say how fast it is charging. So uh, I have, of course, some uh, Asian ways to do it. Um, we can try. I mean, you can check it out now. All right. So if you see the charger here, and by the way, this is it was a bit cumbersome for me because first I park here, which is obviously the this charging spot. You see, no, no, none of the other spots are marked as as charging spots. But the problem with the iPads is that. 
uh, and also the charging station is that uh, the plug is over here so when I park here then I couldn't plug it in without like uh, scratching the hood so um, this is always a problem with uh, people with uh, these type of cars or maybe like the i3 or uh, Ionic uh, the cable is too short but all right let's see um, oh no you know what I can't see the info here because uh, then you have to show the RFID which it will not accept I mean it will not it wasn't started with this RFID uh, all right uh, yes this is um, illegal card uh, but maybe we need some food and uh, we have we have McDonald's over there but there's some Chinese store over here hmm let's check it out all right the iPace is charging over there it needs at least one hour I'm estimating one one hour or one hour and 15 minutes uh, but look look okay okay we have a Chinese food Chinese restaurant called Chop Chop <laughs> yes okay so while we're waiting for uh, the the iPace to charge it takes a very long time on the 50 kilowatts fast charger then we can just go chop chop get some Chinese food <laughs> you know I'm half Chinese yeah all right let's go inside wow this is a lot of food some, uh, fried rice with uh, chicken and some what is this? this is just today's meal there yeah. and then what is this farm no. so let's dig in oh man that was a lot of food it was a nice chop chop so let's check out how it is over there huh uh, you see there's an i3 waiting they'd be like Freaking eyepiece, it's gonna charge forever. So, um, it's actually Norwegian, I, uh, Norwegian i3. <laughs> so, let's check out how much juice we have. Oh, yes, we have 70%. Uh, we've been there a while though. <laughs> but let's see, I want to navigate to Falcon Bike. I checked it beforehand that um, we have to get to Falcon Bike. Uh, that's like the best option. Um, because there aren't many other uh, Fortune fast chargers nearby that are uh, uh, right by the highway. So Falcon is over here, right? Um, now, let's see. What is this one? Um, no, that's view option. Okay. Now, how do I change set? Okay. Right. Uh, let me see. Um, let me see. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. The destinations. <coughs> Recent. Um... Okay, th this doesn't tell me too much, uh, but I remember it was this one. I checked it. I had to check it on the app, on the Fortum app. And then you see the problem, which was that in the beginning, uh, the navigation was set to add charging stations. So in the history, it still had that charging station, which I never visited in here. So. This is a bit clumsy because now, okay, I can go there and then go to Falcon Bank. We have to start, right? Then it takes a while. Okay, and then I have to go here and edit. And then you see this one, Kungar, nope. Um, huh? No, okay. I already did this before, so I have to uncheck that one and then delete that. Uh, yes, remove that waypoint. Kungsbaka. No, huh? What? Delete that one also. Show route. All right, seventy kilometers. Yes, that's it's um, it's weird. We only had to drive seventy kilometers. That's like uh, forty-five miles. But uh, that's the, the best choice. And uh, also, that means that the i3 here can finally get some juice. So let's unplug and get the heck out of here. Oh, by the way, a little, a little. Um, a side note here uh, you see that as just like most other cars when we are uh, like when the car is on like right now the car has to be on you have to start the car here in order to use navigation or whatever it's only Tesla that kind of like 
always powers on for you. Uh, all the other cars, you have to, there's like a start button. There's no start button like this in a Tesla. Uh, but while, while this car is like started like now, you see that average speed goes down now because it counts the average speed in the trip meter. So you can't trust the average speed here. Yeah. But all right, let's get the heck out of here. We are now at the supercharger in Falkenberg, but we are not supercharging. The supercharger is over there. Yeah, you can see it in the background there, but we have one photon charger. This is the rea reality uh, in Sweden. Uh, some places like here, actually the stretch we've been today, have only one fast charger. Whereas in Norway, you normally have two or four fast chargers in each location. Because Sweden, they just don't get it yet. Yes, <laughs> just lost a bunch of Swedish subscribers now. Uh, but anyway, so we are charging here again. So no, let me show you something cool. All right, look, 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 look. I'm approaching the car, right? So one hand is holding the camera, another one is doing something else, and then look here. Woo! All right, now let me try again. Okay, whoop! You're supposed to sweep your feet here, like this. Now, typically. It's supposed to work, but maybe not. Maybe I have to switch off the car. You know what? The car is... No, it's, it's, it's off now. The car is off. There's uh, this, this foot gesture thing. There's a sensor here. So you can, like this, and open the trunk. Come on. Well, there's, there's a sensor somewhere here. Like... Like... Okay, let's see. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool and very useful feature, not just a gimmick. Uh, many times when I approach a Tesla, I have my hands full. I'm like, Ugh, uh, I was like, uh, let me press the button, press the button, <sighs> like that to open it. Yeah, but not in this car. No, this one has the power liftgate gesture. I think that's what it's called. All right. Hmm. So I think we have to stay here for a while, but let's make some more video. But okay, let's. Uh, oh, right, by the way, I have. I have all this crap with me, look here. Uh, this is uh, the Evernex sunshade for Tesla. I have some video equipment, tripod, uh, sleeping equipment, uh, blankets, my laptop. And, uh, oh, you know what, I need, I need a laptop. I'm going to calculate consumption. I mean, I'm going to calculate the optimal speed based on the consumption I've done so far. Yeah, all right, so, let me see, can we close? We can close the lift gate from this one, right? Yeah, all right, that, at least that works, yeah. Good, this one. And there's a camera, a backup camera there. And there's also cameras on the side and a camera on the front, but you guys have seen it before. Uh, but let's show you something cool in the car. So the cool thing about iPace is that there is no analog gauge. Okay, see here we have just a digital big display, just like in the e-Golf and also in uh, uh, Model S or Tesla, Model S and X. They have this nice screen here that's gonna be customizable. Just show you here quickly. Okay, so if we go here, um, you go to uh, actually go here, content. No, that's trip, trip. Uh, lots of customizations. Okay, go up there. All right, uh, info panel. Okay, display layout. What do you want to show here? Uh, have one dial like this. Okay, 
or do you want two dials like this? Okay, let me adjust it a bit. How about a full map? Yeah, in case you want to see all of that stuff or media, if that's important for you. Or driver assistance, you can show the... Uh, let me see, I'll do exit this one to show there, this one. Then you can show more driver, really big driver assistance um, info. Okay, so if we go back here, display a lot. I prefer the two dial actually. This one, all right. And then, let me see, if you go back here to display, oh, it's a bit weird, there, there, there. And then you have some units and language. It's weird because you have, you have, <laughs> like some other cars, you have language for instrument cluster and language for, for the infotainment system. So this one could be in English and this one could be in Norwegian for some reason. Yeah, but I've seen in, uh, in some, like, uh, Kona and uh, Nero, that I think it was Seoul, you can have different languages like this. But then in uh, Nero, they linked it together, which is more, <laughs> makes more sense. Um, yeah, so I chose to have this one, info panel. You have average consumption, you have average speed, which counts up, and then recuperated energy and the distance. So I just have that one up here. But here, okay, so we have this screen, right? The infotainment screen. Uh, lots of customization here too. You can have this uh, home screen here. Okay, this is like, you have different, um, uh, menus here, like like different um, uh, different settings, and then there was a home screen. Where is it? Uh, wait a minute. Maybe I'm telling you the wrong info here, but uh, yeah, I just use it like this. Um, well, I'm gonna show you uh, this one. Well, I've shown it before, right? Yeah, you see. <laughs> uh, in some car, I mean, yeah, some cars. I wonder if it was yeah. I think it was the BMW. They at least put this one. They they twisted it to to be like horizontal. Um, so that is better because usually the screens are horizontal, except for Tesla, I guess. Model S and X they have vertical screen. Uh, but the problem again with the other cars is that it's a little bit unlogic to watch it like that. So um, in, uh, in I pace and also in Leaf it's like this. Yes, at least it's a 360 camera and. In here, they made it fairly seamless. Yeah, and then of course you have other settings here. Like I use this one. Yeah, and when when you back up, you see. I mean, when you when you not back up, when you park with nose in, then you can see better uh, how close you are. And then you have these uh, cameras here, just a different angle. And then uh, and then you have that one is a side one, so you don't uh, hit the rims. All right, that is important for you. And then the backup camera is like this wide angle mode or you can switch it also to be not that wide angle this is the default one when you put the car in reverse uh, let me see so this is the new software by the way but i don't feel like they have done much like it it looks and feel much like the previous one uh still a little bit laggish uh, and also still a bit like um how to say it like uh, hard to understand hard to use yeah to put it in a nice way but 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 look here this, I like this one this screen here so it's a tiny screen here also and this one is also like it's also a screen you see and you can pull it here to change uh -huh, there no okay you pull it to change what you want to do so uh, now you change temperature right and then you pull it, and then you can change fan speed. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Let me see, I want to set it back to automatic. Okay, then you go here, climate, automatic. Yeah. Um, but, you see, you have like settings here for... Uh, I'm not sure what this one does. I haven't tried all the settings yet. Hmm. Hmm. Here we have some... Uh, Oh, smart climate. Oh, this looks cool. Improve range. Yes, that's on. Okay, good. I want to improve the range. But, 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 okay. Um, no, not climate. Here, here. You go here. You see, you don't... It's not... I mean, if you don't care too much about the climate, then you can have some other info here, like the audio. Yeah. So this one is the phone, if you want to go in here. But here, let's see. So you can play. Okay. 
audio here. <laughs> but it makes the same as this one. Well, if you otherwise you have to go here, right? Otherwise you have to go in. Uh, uh, let me see, where is it again? Okay, let's pause that one. Uh, otherwise you have to go here, and then yes, you have it here too. But uh, let's say you want to have navigation here, like I had it. I had the navigation here, and then you can have the audio here. Oh, that's nice. All right, and the next fast charger will be here, Malmo. That's the last one before uh, Denmark. So if you click on this one, you see the address here. Uh, Thompson's Weg number one, Malmo. Okay, and then we will try to enter it. So fortunately, we don't have to enter like, you know, city, street, street number, whatever. We can do it like Google. Right, so you do uh, one, right, Tom, some, Tom Tom's Weg. And you see, uh, we don't have to use all the special letters. The special, there's, it, they also index the non special letter. Alright, if you do this, it won't find anything. Sometimes it will find it, sometimes it won't. So then you have to amend search, and then you have to. Well, actually, no, let, let's say if you want to change something over here. Now, this is this is clumsy. I wish it was like Tesla or mm, like most other systems, like on on smartphone, because you can't skip back to this one. Let's say if you want to change it from one to twelve, what happens then? Uh, if you start entering something here, you delete everything. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, that is very unfortunate. Uh, but anyway, let's uh, go back here. Sons, okay. We have to enter the city. I'm not sure why it can't find it. But we can just do it like this, Malmo. And it should find it. There, yes, that's right. Okay, and then start. 175 kilometers. Yeah, that should be fine uh, because we stay here a little bit too long as usual I've been making some videos and stuff so um, see we are 93% so then even with <laughs> massive consumption we have we'll make it there hmm but this stretch here has like rough tarmac or I'm not sure what kind of surface is it could be uh, uh, concrete but every time I drive here with a Tesla I've driven this route many many times it's so noisy here but here right now in the Jag it's actually not too bad like very quiet so I believe that the soundproofing in the wheel arches in the Jag is better than Tesla of course we have to test it eventually but my impression with the 20 20 inch wheels we have is good shit We are now in Malmö. I rarely come here, but uh, again, here we have one fast charger, which is blocked by a trailer. Um, seems like they never have customers, they're charging customers. But that's fine because I just plug in from behind because I have a jack. Oh yeah. 
Um, so, again, let's take a look. Oh, I'm gonna go inside. It's it's cold outside. It's like, let me see, what's the temperature? Uh, okay, we have to fire up the car, okay. Uh, 10 degrees Celsius, Oof, and windy. Uh, okay, uh, so as usual, hmm, what the heck? First brake, blah, 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 okay. Uh, so in order to see still charge, I have to go here. Yeah, 31%, we came here with 27%. So uh, it's going okay speed. Um, it's going to be interesting once we start charging on the, the ultra fast charger tonight. But let's see, okay, uh, blah, blah, okay, clear. Very thirsty, this car, oh. And um, we have been getting uh, uh, mostly tailwind or sidewind, somewhat tailwind today. Let me show you something here. This app is nice. Um, for wind direction okay so in the past we've been traveling this direction right we've been getting tailwind but now we will fight the we have to fight the wind 19 knots oh okay it's not like direct hit but like side wind so that's going to hurt the consumption big time um, I have two options uh, option one take it easy just drive 90 kilometers per hour drive behind trucks or whatever and then option two hammer it <laughs> uh, let's try option two then hmm. <laughs> uh, I bet I have to charge somewhere uh, in Denmark then uh, let's see we have uh, we have lots of apps so let me see Bilkraft this is of a Norway Grand Contact uh, Belib that's Paris go charge it's in Norway Lot no, it's just uh, yeah, Norway also clever. Denmark, yeah, they're clever. This one is one, one. Okay, clever. This is for Denmark. Who and Sweden? Oh, there's a clever charger over there. Mm, okay, how do we zoom here? You want to pinch? Okay, yeah, wow, lots of clever chargers in uh, uh, Denmark. Hmm, hmm. Oh, it started raining again. Okay, uh, but this car is like. It's not online yet, so I can't try to find like uh, um, I was trying to find charging stations, but they don't show up here. So let me show you something here, right? So we have this one. I put lots of crap in here. Um, here we have the 12 volt outlet, and uh, supposedly in some cars there's an uh, HDMI input but not in this car but at least I have USB it reads wave files uncompressed wave files yeah some you will be like oh you have to use OG yeah, okay great great and then this one another one you can also use this one these have communication so uh, when you plug it in you can use um, uh, the the Android uh, what is it uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto will work here uh, and then you have the micro SIM slot here. So if you put the SIM card in there, then the car goes online. Yeah, but um, hmm, maybe I should test it. Uh, she... I took out that tool, you know, for taking out, for poking out the SIM card here, and then I dropped it between the seat. Like the seat in every car is like a black hole. You will swallow things in here and then you can never get it out again. I tried to push the seat forward, backwards, up, down. It's impossible to retrieve it. It's lost forever in here. So we have to give up testing this one until I'm back in Norway. What the heck? It's it's raining and it's it's a hailing. It's hail, right? Hey. I want to grab some uh, soda from the front. So, uh, the front is tiny, but you can put some stuff in here. And this time, well, it has this safety lock thingy. Uh, I just have to remember where it is. Okay. Oh, yes, let's see. Nice and well, cold ish. Hmm, I feel like having a. I feel like having a 7 up. Oh, yes. No, let's close this one. Oops! Ah! Shit! Because you're supposed to like, if you're supposed to close it like this, I think. Uh, 
Damn. Ah. I hit my finger. Squeeze my finger. Maybe I have to open it again. It seems like it went to some kind of weird lock. Uh, let me put this one here for now. Um, what happened with the front now? Maybe we just have to push it with two hands. Okay, we're good, we're good. Yes, my finger is broken now. Let's go inside. Oh, it's... What, what shitty weather? What the heck? I was, I was expecting good weather over here. Ugh. Oh no, and then the car shuts off. Even if it was running, it will detect that you, you left the seat and open the door. It will, it will power off the car. Unlike other EVs, once you power it on, then it stays on. But not this one. So I wonder how the heck I'm supposed to sleep in the car. When? Ah, oh, you know what? Wait a minute. If I don't exit the car, then it will keep running. Oh, yes. All right, let's see. Uh, I want to have some heat here. Brr, brr. Um, automatic. Uh, let's, let's um, pull. Why not push? Pull. Pull and then turn off. Crank up the... It goes to seven? Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, nice. Oh, what's this? I have a message from someone. Read out. Hard to tank deck till mold. MVH. Marcos. <laughs> oh, shit. Is that the mold? Ah. Wait, Hard to tank deck till mold. MVH. Marcos. <laughs> Wait, can I read it? What is this? Oh. Oh, and then I can... I can reply. Oh, nice! Why can't I have this in the Tesla? Shit! Alright, so while I'm charging, I'm at uh, 58%. I'm going to edit a short video yeah, about the power liftgate. That was pretty cool. I mean, what's it called? Gesture liftgate, yeah. But you see that this one, this 12 watt outlet is charging that camcorder. So, and I want to also charge a laptop. But. No problem because in the back here we also have another one here. <laughs> oh yes, we have another one there. <laughs> and two USBs. Ooh, I almost forgot. I got a fortune cookie from the Chop Chop store. Yeah, let's see. I want to know what message they have for me. So how are we supposed to do this? We just eat it, right? Mmm. Right. And then read the message. It says, Dit sinne er fylt av nye ideer. Anvend dem. It means that your mind are filled with new ideas. Use them. Whatever that means. Hmm. What kind of ideas? Let's go off roading. <laughs> now let's get the heck out of here. It's uh, 7.30 in the evening now. We just left uh, Copenhagen and heading west. Go west! Wait, uh, no, okay, maybe not, but um, yeah. So we've been on the road for eight hours and I don't feel that tired. Uh, maybe because we have so long charging breaks. Yeah, eight hours, hmm. But these seats, oh man. These seats are so comfy. I wish I had them in a Tesla. Like, if we can just have the Tesla drivetrain and then the the Jaguars, like tech, like, I'll get some of the tech, you know, like um, the head up display, uh, the rear lift gate with the gesture. Oh, um, also, some of the interior is nice, like, you know, there's actually a real, ah, oh, there's actually a real armrest here and the tesla is like weird design 
yeah i'm not sure how the heck they managed to design it like that so um overall you know the interior of the ipad is really nice and okay okay the the consumption is sky high really high but as long as you don't drive too far then i guess it's okay and another thing is that until now we've been charging with the 50 kilowatt fast chargers uh, by the time you know the majority of um, i-paces and uh, eqc or what they roll out in a couple of years there will be way more of these uh, super fast chargers you know the 150 plus kilowatt fast chargers so then it won't be that bad because you know i travel around in norway with a trailer and i have way higher consumption with the trailer but it's okay because i have a really fast charging a supercharger tesla supercharger and i believe that okay this one is really thirsty at some times but uh, with those fast chargers you won't feel it too much but right now i'm feeling it yes with a 50 kilowatt <laughs> Yeah, so I'm just gonna listen to music and enjoy the ride. Oh yeah. Wow, this car has full LED adaptive headlights, true adaptive headlights. Um, you see that there are segments of the headlight that turns on and off. It's got a camera will read everything ahead and then switch off uh, the light for uh, cars, like oncoming cars or cars in front of us. And unlike the system for uh, Volkswagen, I've tested the e-Golf. That one uses physical light. I mean, it physically moves the light, but this one is just LED, just a matrix that switches on and off. Wow, didn't know that. <laughs> hmm. It seems like, yeah, it can switch off fast enough so it won't bother people. Because I remember on the e-Golf, it tend to like not react fast enough and then like I kind of like uh, the, the the light was too bright for oncoming traffic so uh, time time the trucks or whatever just blink at me you know but here it seems like uh, they do uh, the system does a pretty good job of uh, uh, avoiding to you know light up people's faces hmm. Hmm. look 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 okay all right oncoming cars okay and then the the, the right side here is lit up so you can detect animals or whatever. Mm, nice, nice, I like this. Maybe like 15 minutes. I'm actually we've been we've stayed here longer, so we are at 49% now. But I accidentally stopped the charging process. Uh, this car does some weird things. Like okay, if I open the door right, now the car is on. Okay, and then I, I lift my butt. Oh, uh, there. Oh. And then I leave the car, and then it shuts off. <laughs> Unlike all the other EVs, they still stay on. Okay. But what I did was, I was going to take a picture and then the lights turned off eventually, I was fiddling too long. So what did I do? I locked the car and then I unlocked the car 
But if you do, I don't remember what you do, but if you do that procedure, some, something with that procedure, then you stop the charging. I remember that also happened with the Model S. At least in the old days, when you press the, the roof of the fob, right, it will also stop charging. Uh, what we can see here, now, how long we've been here, at least this charging session, the first charging session only lasted for a couple of minutes. Okay, oh, what? We've been at 26 minutes already? Okay, but anyway, there's supposed to be a, a, a restaurant or something over here. Uh, let's see, just throw away the garbage. Which side does it open? This side, okay. All right, put it in here. Yes, I should recycle it, but I'm too lazy. So, it is very windy. Wait, uh, did I lock the car? I mean, I see that there's some light in the car. So, well, I should lock it, right? So, I hope I don't stop the charging process. Uh, if I just lock it like this. Yeah, that, that should be safe. Okay. So, it's getting late. Uh, this has taken longer than I expected. So um, it's nine in the evening, and we haven't. We still, we are still not at that uh, ultra charger, the, the Ionity charger in Rödekru. It would take almost two hours to get there because we have to charge another half an hour ish. Let's say maybe 20 more minutes, and then, uh, and then we have to drive on like 150 kilometers to the to the crew so I will try to take it easy this time let's see if we take it easy try to save energy see how far we can get then on how much energy we consume so there's a restaurant here over here you see uh, hopefully they have some food and stuff do I need more food hmm maybe uh, they closed this section already so we have burgers, hot dogs, and some sandwich. Hmm. Maybe I can hold it to the other crew. Hmm. All right. Um, I didn't feel like having any food over there, but I brought some snack. Yes. Let's have some dried fish. Hmm. Yeah. This is gonna be fishy in the car, um, but anyway, we are now charged to 72%. And I did some quick math. Uh, I don't trust gum, but I, uh, I estimated that we could try to average 300 watt per kilometer, and I want to arrive with about 10%. Uh, yeah, at the ultra charger, the Ionity charger. Um, this is good stuff, man. Yeah. I want to do a charge from 10 to 90 percent to see how fast it is. I'm dying to know how fast it can charge with proper charging. You know, like I said, you no, know, we don't care how much this car consumes as long as it can charge fast enough. Then, yeah. show another cool feature right look here screensaver and then it says stealth mode oh do you know what that is okay so if you go here exit this one go back back here all right so if you go to this setting and then you have like you can go to like setup or whatever Right, but then you have this button, the stealth button. Look, okay, so now I'm just gonna show you. Um, inside here, we have some ambient light, we have this light up here, we have, we have some lights under here, you know. Pretty much the car is somewhat lit up, also in the back. You see there, all right, and then let's go into stealth mode. This, this reminds me of SOP now. It's not focusing. Okay, let's go to stealth mode. 
boom <laughs> everything just went black now yeah once you go black you never go back so now this is cool stealth mode it switched off everything because it's pitch dark outside so you don't want that distractive light yeah and then you just touch the screen once bring it back again yeah <laughs> We are now at Rödekro. This is the Holy Grail. This is the sanctuary. But let's check the state of charge. Okay, let's see. I'll go back here. My EV. Booyah! 10%! <laughs> okay, let's set up. Oh, let me show, show you. Uh, uh, it stops. Uh, I forgot to stop. Oh, look, 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 look. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I only chargers. This is going to be okay. It's a bit dark here. Let me, let me try from this this side. Uh, six stalls. Each of them have the dedicated 350 kilowatt power unit. So um, this is going to be standard all over Europe. And uh, iPace, e-tron, EQC, and other cars. Oh, and of, of course, uh, Kona, uh, Ionic can still use this. Um, Nero, they will get, well, they won't get 350 kilowatt. They will get uh, maybe like 72 to whatever. So I'm dying to know now how fast iPace will charge on these chargers. <laughs> okay, let's set it up then. Wow, okay. So I wanted to uh, mount up a camera inside the car to just record, uh, you know, that display. It doesn't show you the charging speed, but this display shows you everything. This is pretty nice. Look here, we have voltage. Uh, uh, let's zoom in. There, there, you see, voltage. You know, this this pack has very high voltage compared to other cars. Like, um, that's probably why I get the impression that it was charging fast on the 50 kilowatt fast chargers. So you see, already at 26 percent, it has 408 volt. Uh, the the current seems to be capped at 200 amp. Uh, I heard that um, it's a limitation in the software of the of the car, and that supposedly it it supports higher um, because you have two standards CCS plug, right? Um, the CCS one plug supports up to 200 amp, which we are getting right now, and then the CCS two plug will go up to 500 amp. This is a CCS supposedly this is a CCS two plug. Ooh, cooling system. I can feel that it's like slightly, it's like some, some kind of vibration in here, you know? Which means that we have coolant running through the cable. So this is liquid cooled cable, CCS2. So this, these chargers are rated for, you know, Porsche uh, Taycan, 350 kilowatts. So this is the good shit, the real thing. Uh, the limitation seems to be in the car. So, uh, but wow, 82. No, oh, no, I'm also recording. So, I'm, this is this is going to be the video I will post, by the way. So, uh, a separate video. This is very impressive. That speed. Let me zoom in and check again now how it's going. So, um, when I try to charge, when I, when I charge Ion, uh, uh, Kona and Nero, they were getting 72 kilowatt only because the voltage was lower. They were, and also they were getting about 100, what seems to be about 190 amp. Now on those chargers I tried, uh, we didn't see the number of amps. Actually we saw it a, a little bit, yes. It was 190, it wasn't 200 for some reason. I'm not sure why, but um, it seems like these chargers over here, these ones, they, they kick ass for the Lord. So um, the charger stacks are over there, I believe. Uh, yeah, so the the inverter, whatever, is not in here. They they dug up the, the ground just like Tesla, and they have stuff over there. Yeah, I'm I'm guessing it's over there. So um, wow, this is very <laughs> exciting. <laughs> Let me check again. 
<laughs> sorry for that, sorry for that. Oh, look at that. 410 volts already at 30%. What? Huh? Okay. I mean, based on this, it means that it should charge f fairly fast on on the 50 kilowatt DC fast chargers also. Huh. Oh, okay, it's green. <laughs> it's green from the plug there, you see? Uh, yeah, there's, there's a green light there, but um, this will be part one of the trip. So from here, I will do series of tests and make some high speed runs or whatever. So uh, it will be like back and forth a little bit. Uh, and then part two is when I return back to Norway. So yes, uh, I think that's it. I will be very busy for the next like 16 hours. It's making lots of stuff and then I have to return right actually do i have 16 hours or oh, i was out to sleep oh i forgot about that oh. but yeah so part one yes so <laughs> talk to you later then